www.kanayes.com and uh, we're very grateful to be speaking to Joe Cummings. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, and how's Bangkok right now? It's been very hot the last couple of weeks. Uh, we need some rain. We had a little rain this afternoon and cooled it off, but uh, it, the rain stopped and it's hot again already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we were just talking about the uh, uh, things being open again, um, the measures being That's eased. right. Yeah, stuff is slowly opening up. They've been pretty cautious, well, very cautious here. And yeah, now restaurants this week are open, but they have to have you know, a certain amount of distance, etc. cetera. And uh, you know, it's being unevenly enforced. So now, you know, I'm tending to seek out the places that aren't so strict. Because for me, it's just not worth going out to eat. Right. If you have barriers, you might as well stay home. Yeah. And uh, public pools are open. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. So you can go swimming at least. Exactly. And the parks are open. Yeah, that's nice. Is, we've seen photos of uh, establishments in Bangkok actually having like a barrier up. Yes. Yeah. Do you see this? I am, I, I, you know, I'm just avoiding any place that I know might have that. <laughs> sure, yeah, it can't be nice, yeah. So how long have you been based actually in Bangkok now? Um, in Bangkok for 11 years. Before that, I was in Chiang Mai for 12 years. Okay, nice. Why did you decide to make the move from uh, Chiang Mai? It was mainly for work. I had, uh, there, was, there were more contacts here and uh, just to get my freelance portfolio kind of beefed up in 2008, I moved down here. And uh, yeah, it worked pretty well. And I ended up loving Bangkok. Right. I didn't want to move at first, but now I'm, now I'm, I'm hooked on it. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what's, uh, what's nice for you about Bangkok? Um, I guess the, the fact that it's so varied, there's so much different kinds of entertainment, different kinds of dining, but most of all, just different kinds of people. It's yeah. like every time I go out, I meet new people and new faces and I'm I'm a junkie for that I'm like you know when I was in Chiang Mai I saw the same as much as I love Chiang Mai mm -hmm. I saw like the same 15 people you know every all year long and now I you know I might meet new 15 15 new people in a week in Bangkok mm -hmm. Did, uh, is this what inspires some of your writing then meeting uh, different different characters I guess so I think that's it that's part of it yeah I need to meet people to find out get some stories you know to get some ideas some some tips travel tips you know yeah yeah uh, you've been described as um uh, a travel guru huh? <laughs> in one of your interviews i read and uh tell us about your book which was uh the thailand a travel survival kit which was it, it, correct me if i'm wrong this was published by the lonely planet yeah um, but it, this is your book so tell us a little bit about about this yeah, that was the original original title. Uh, they changed it later on. Okay. All the guides in the beginning, all the country guides were a travel survival kit. You know, the name of the country and then that. But they ditched that somewhere along the line and just changed it to Lonely Planet Thailand. So I started with that book with them back in 1982, and uh, it was the first their first guidebook to Thailand. And I kept I kept it up to date for Lonely Planet for the next 25 years. Wow. Uh, That's a long yeah, that was. Time. Uh, then I did many other books for them too. Yeah, and uh, the the Lonely Planet is a, a kind of ultimate uh, traveler bible, isn't it? You know that. Uh, yeah, well, at least it once was. I think that's changing a bit now with the digital information being more available. But uh, yeah, for sure. It, it, for me, I would say that it's it's it peaked in probably in sales and in fame and in status and prestige, probably in the late '90s up to around 2005, 2006, and then, then you started getting these crowdsource information websites like TripAdvisor that, you know, they became a solid competitor, not necessarily in quality, but just in terms of what people used in day-to-day -day travel. So it wasn't so such an important thing after that. Uh, not that that matters. Yeah. And um, so how, do you go, how did you go about writing these books? Is it just traveling, traveling, traveling? note making i mean it must be such a lengthy and in-depth process it, it it is and it even more so before the internet obviously i mean nowadays if you're a guidebook writer or a travel writer you can get a lot of information on the internet you can kind of you know if you if you're not sure how many hotels are in a certain city you can find out very quickly online for example but when i started out not only was there no internet there were no guidebooks to thailand 
So I was just, uh, for the first few editions, I was just traveling to different towns, small towns, large towns, whatever, and meeting local people in night markets often and asking them what there was to see and do. And they'd give me some tips. Sometimes they'd say, jump on the back of my bike. I'll take you out to this waterfall. And uh, it was like that. It was just sort of ad hoc. And I just found things that were of interest to me. And I wrote, the, wrote about them. And uh, it just sort of got bigger and bigger. The first time I went to Gopangan, in case you know, first time I set foot on Hot Rin was 1981. Wow, it must have changed uh, dramatically. Oh, God. <laughs> it was such, Hot Rin was such an unbelievable paradise in 1981. Just when we walked onto the beach, it was, it, it blew my mind. Yeah. Was, 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 was there some kind of full moon party happening then? No. First full moon party was, first full moon party I went to was 1989. I think the first one was 87, 88, 89, right in there. And what was it like back in the day? Well, I, it was huge. In 1989, when I went, I think uh, they told me how many people were there. Several thousand, four or five thousand, something like that. Yeah, I think it was four or five thousand, even in 1989. And I thought it was huge, you know. And then I went back. I didn't go again until, funnily enough, just switched the digits. I went back again in 1998 with a friend from Bangkok who was going every year. I mean, every, every, every month at that point she was coming. Um, and by that time, in 1998, there were 12,000 on the beach. And uh, I haven't been back since then. I haven't, I haven't been to a full moon party on Gulf of since 19, 19, 1998. But have you been back to the island since 1998? Yes. Yeah, when did you come? Many, many times. I mean, I had to come back often for the guidebooks, and I've done lots of freelance articles also. And I've done hotel reviews that have taken me down there. And I just, I've gone there just to, you know, on my, for personal travel quite a bit. So I, I probably get down, oh, I go down every year for, I've almost forgot, every year for a, a detox. I just did one in, um, I think it was November was the last one. I did a detox at Orion. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this island is uh, opposites, isn't it? You've got the party, well, usually, <laughs> the party yeah. and then the, the health side of it. So, uh, right. Very interesting. Mm. Fast.